this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make the Anita Camisole pattern, which is my first sewing pattern that's available to buy on my Etsy shop. The fabric I'm using for this project is a lightweight satin in this gorgeous pink shade. You'll want to cut out your pattern pieces. This pattern is made for a size small and uses less than a metre of fabric, so it's perfect for using scraps out of your stash. The first thing we're going to do is neaten the facing edges. You can use an overlocker, pinking shears or a zigzag stitch close to the fabric edge. Next we're going to sew the front neckline. With right sides together, pin and sew the front facing to the bodice front with a 1cm seam allowance. Make sure to leave two half inch gaps to insert the straps. Now we're going to sew the back neckline. With right sides facing, pin and sew the back facing to the bodice back, using a 1cm seam allowance and leaving two half inch gaps where the notches are to insert the straps. I accidentally forgot to leave two gaps so I had to seam rip them out later on. Now we're going to sew the straps. We do this by folding the fabric in half with right sides together. Sew down the length of the strap using a 0.5cm seam allowance. This is what they start to look like. And now we're going to trim off any excess and turn the strap right side out with a loop turner. After a good press, this is how they should look. Now we're going to attach the strap to the front bodice by sandwiching the strap between the bodice front and facing, where we left those two gaps. Pin and sew along the opening. To keep a clean and crisp look, we're going to understitch the neckline facing. This is when you sew a line of stitching close to the edge of the neckline, so 
to keep the facing from rolling forwards to the outside. Make sure you stitch the seam allowance to the facing. This is how it looks after I gave it a nice press. Now we're going to connect the straps to the back bodice by sandwiching them between the two gaps. I also understitched the back neckline and pressed it to get a nice crisp edge. To finish our side seams, we're going to use a French seam as it looks very professional and is comfortable against the skin. With wrong sides together, pin and sew the side seams with a 1cm seam allowance. Then we're going to trim close to the seam and turn the garment right sides together and stitch the seam again with a 1cm seam allowance, making sure that we enclose the seam we just created for a nice and neat finish. This is what it looks like, you want to give it a good press. For the last step, all we have to do now is hem the top by folding the bottom towards the wrong side by half an inch, pressing it and then folding it again to create a double hem. Pin this in place and stitch along the entire hem. I annoyingly put my pins in the wrong way round, so you'll see me struggle at the sewing machine now.
and we're all done. I hope you enjoyed making the Anita camisole pattern. It's a very straightforward make and it can be worn more casually or dressed up depending on your fabric choice. I would love to see if you decide to make this pattern. It's available to buy on my Etsy shop, which is linked in the description bar below. And you'll also be able to see other people's versions too. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos from me.